Good afternoon and welcome to the first concurrent session of the day, UNC Charlotte College Algebra, a redesigned success story. Our presenter today is John Taylor from UNC Charlotte. If you have any questions for the presenter during the session, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom room screen and we will address them at the end of the talk. On that note, I will hand it over to our presenter. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Dr. John R. Taylor. I'm a math professor here at UNC Charlotte. Um, uh, several years ago, I was in charge of a redesign that we did here with College Algebra and uh, kind of show you some of the information that we gathered from that and um, some more information about uh, what has happened during the pandemic and as we're getting out of the pandemic. So this thing is kind of in two parts. Uh, pretty much uh, more than five years ago when we actually did the redesign, and then the pandemic hit and show you some data from what happened when we had to go online and then trying to get back into more of traditional classes and stuff. So let me go ahead and present my PowerPoint presentation. So let me share my screen here. Okay. Let me double check, make sure you guys can see this. All right, hopefully you can see my PowerPoint presentation. All right, so with this, uh, we named this uh, College Algebra, a redesign success, success story. It was, um, again, uh, uh, 2015 when we started this whole project of actually looking at the redesign. So let me go ahead and get started on this. Okay. Why we needed a redesign. Fact number one, in the fall semester of 2015, we had approximately 2,000 students registered for College Algebra and nearly 750 registered in the spring semester with these numbers increasing each year. A typical semester uh, would bring about, uh, the professors of the course were made up about approximately one third full-time faculty, one third part-time faculty, and one third graduate students. Of the part-time faculty, about half are that worked for the department less than five years, and most of the graduate students will have had college algebra as their first class taught under their own direction. The problems with the overall results of the course included, one, a lack of consistent teaching throughout the large number of sections and professors teaching the course, a wide range of course, uh, course scores on the common final exam, large DNF did not finish the course uh, in each section, and a lack of consistency, consistent use of, of, by the professors of our web work online homework system that we were involved with. Because of these factors, college algebra became one of our top courses on the list for a redesign. The redesign uh, team called by the university and the mathematics department came up with a solution where uh, Dr. Muhammad Kazimi, who's the associate chair of the math department, Ms. Elizabeth Eagle, uh, Mrs. Desiree Taylor, and myself. The redesign team, we focused on number one, computer software and homework system. The most important thing was to find, a, find and work with a textbook company that offered an online homework system with their textbook that had the course content that we required. We uh, also were looking for the software system that had to be easy to use and create special homework and quizzes within the system. Uh, third, this software system had to work well with our students and instructors. This was kind of the most important aspect of this thing was trying to create a homework system that one, we're an engineering school. So with college algebra, there's certain aspects of the course that we're really gonna emphasize and other things we don't emphasize as much. And we wanted to basically have, uh, you know, our input into the course. A lot of textbook people, this is their package, take it or leave it. Um, not with the Hawks folks. They actually customized everything that we asked for. So we created a college algebra half notes for faculty and students to make sure special types of examples were covered in lecture. Half notes are formulas and questions that had no answers and the instructor goes over in class while the students are taking notes. Since most students do not know how to study or, and take notes, the half notes allow them to understand the process of note taking. So this is one of the key aspects that we came up with 
to help out our students. Our students coming right out of high school, they, they, they just stare at us while we're actually doing math on the board and stuff. They don't write anything down or anything. And when they go home and do the homework, well, then they don't remember exactly what we did. And, you know, it looks good in front of the board, but they don't seem to be able to do it when they get home. Having this half notes and forcing them to take notes and learn how to take notes was key. We also created a small 10 to 15 minute videos that introduced the basic ideas of the material in each section and then created pre-section quizzes to, uh, through the computer software system based upon the video that was made. These pre-section quizzes would be about five easy problems that made sure the students uh, were, were watching the uh, videos before coming to class so they would actually have an idea about the material uh, that was about to be covered. One of my pet peeves is when a student comes up to me right about the beginning class, what are we covering today, Dr. Taylor? Don't you know, dude? I mean, we're covering, we're going from section 2.3 to 2.4. We're working on exponents today. This way, I never got any more of those questions. They knew exactly what we were about to cover because I we kind of introduced that in this video. And they've also taken a, a quiz that we created through Hawks for them to actually uh, make sure. And, you know, they don't do anything unless point totals are available. So it had a point total on it. We use the online software, the Hawk system, for creating a homework set for each section that was due about five days after finishing each section. Because we used a lot of the mastery level ideas that Hawks created each, uh, with each test, we also created a small online test that would be combined with the test grade from the traditional in-class test that we gave and to give them an overall test grade for that set of material. So we were doing a little bit of both since we're emphasizing so much with the uh, homework through the software and stuff, we created a part of our test to be actually online. And then we also had our traditional test in class. Then we put it together into a uh, web-based platform, Moodle originally, and then we moved to our new platform, Canvas, which is what we use today, for each instructor to upload and then personalize in it in order to make it their own. So we created this shell. This is part of our redesign that we pushed out to, to our faculty, they had all the links to it, to the Hawk system and all the things that had going on and all the other things that we have on campus and stuff. But then they took that and then made that website their own by putting their own personal information and personal links and things like that in there. Each section covered in the textbook with, uh, has our web-based platform before class activities, after class activities, the same below. The MLC, denoted as our Math Learning uh, Resource slash Learning Center, we call it the Math Learning Center now, uh, where graduate students uh, could help answer individual questions from the students. So every student, when they come and you know, watch their web, their Canvas page, they would see, okay, section 1.3, we had four class activities. They were supposed to log into the uh, Hulk system and take a look at and look over their uh, you know, lecture material that they actually provide for us. We also watch the video that, uh, that I put on there about the property of exponents and take a quiz, uh, visit the uh, Math Learning Center, and then they had to go in there and get on the Hawks and do the actual before class quiz before each class. And then also they printed out the notes. We had the notes already embedded in the Canvas page. They would print out the notes and take that to class. So when they come to class, we would actually start working on those kind of problems in the classroom with their half notes if they're just questions. And when you have the questions already written down, I could do a lot more examples in class than I would have to in the old days when I used to write it on the board, write the question, then do the problem, then erase it, then write another question. This way I could actually cover a lot more material in class. And then after class activities, we would go right back to the Hulk system and complete the practice and then go in there to the homework and get their certified uh, material taken care of. Preliminary results. So here's the data. And the new Math 1100 College Algebra redesign was unveiled in the fall of 2015, a semester where four instructors volunteered to try out our new course. The instructors that requested and chosen to use the redesign material in the fall of 2015 were myself, uh, Liz Eagle, uh, Shana Peden, she's one of our uh, full-time faculty members as well. And we also had a graduate student who actually volunteered. We weren't expecting this, but our Tim knew that we were working with the Hawks and he actually came to me and said, John, I would like to actually join in this. I've actually worked with Hawks in the previous school that I uh, taught at and stuff. And uh, so we put him on the, 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 the uh, 
uh, redesign uh, faculty as well to see what he thought of it and stuff. So uh, the rest of the instructors were used the old textbook and we're working as before. So here was our data. Okay, so first off, my code. Um, I had to code so the names of the uh, innocent would be protected here. So EXP faculty or experienced faculty that have uh, at least five years of experience and full-time faculty member. New faculty members, which would be less than five years. Experienced part-timers, those would be uh, at least five years. New part-timers, experience of less than five years working for the department. And the famous graduate student. So this was our data. You know, um, I guess this is one of the reasons why I get to do the presentation here. My class, I had 120 students. Uh, by the end of the semester, I still had 108 of them left over. I do have, a, you know, with these large classes, you do tend to lose a few of them due to life circumstances. They can't complete the class or whatever the case may be. But I had 108 students in my class, and the class average was 81.71, which was phenomenal. And the math department jumped for joy for that huge class and that, that big uh, the average. We also had uh, an experienced faculty member who did very well, 78.7. Uh, but then uh, another one, uh, experienced faculty using the Hawks had 78.4. And then, uh, not to be known which student it was, a graduate student had a 77.7 .7 average. So out of the top four averages on the common final exam, so final exam that we, everybody got the exact same exam that the students took, out of that exam, four, out of the four, three of them were actually on, on the Hawks team. It was our, our class in the redesign. That told the math department a lot. Now, if you look down here, the averages weren't too bad that particular semester, but you're going to see what our problem is. So this is a fall semester when we have a large number of students and a large number of sections. So you can see how the averages went. So down from 81, and then we got the new faculty members. We had experienced faculty members and the numbers dropped. And then um, the one that's on the bottom, we had an actual graduate student teaching the online section. So when you see the online section of a, a math class, those averages are usually very, very low. That was down there at the 64 range. So we're looking at about, you know, uh, almost a 30 point difference between the high and the low averages. That was one of the problems with our college algebra. The numbers were just all over the place. It was basically a crapshoot on which professor you got, whether the averages are going to be good and bad. Now, we all know each professor has, you know, every class has its own personality. And sometimes you get great classes and sometimes you get some not so great classes. We know that. And so the numbers will change semester to semester, depending on how, how what, what kind of uh, uh, personality the class actually takes on and how they work together and study together. This particular semester, I, I had a great class. I really did. It was a large class, but they actually were, they, they actually worked together and working these problems. And it was, you know, it was one of the great semesters that I happen to have. I've had others that weren't so great. I understand that. You know, but, you know, even, uh, you know, some semester we had two uh, experienced Hall faculty members that their section didn't do quite as well. Uh, again, it may be a motivation thing. It's sometimes the personality of the classroom or whatever. But when the first out of the top, Four, three of them were on the Hawks. That, that's actually telling us a lot. And we, we knew that, and the department knew that too. So, by the spring semester uh, 2016, all full time uh, faculty were encouraged, didn't have to, they didn't want to, full time faculty used to redesign. But the part time and graduate students uh, were required to use the redesign. So, this is how we kind of started to motivate students and our, our faculty to use it. So, part timers and graduate students had to use it. And full time, if you wanted to use it to discover about it, which most of them did, uh, a couple of them did not. Um, and so you get to see the results here. So this is when most of the faculty were actually using the Hawks. And we did the Hawks team on this. Those, are, those were people from the original Hawks team that started this thing out. So and you get to see our averages. So again, next semester using the Hawks, the experienced faculty member uh, made it 80, uh, had a, a 80, 85 average and stuff. Again, superb. But again, the numbers tend to dwindle all over. Now, this is a spring semester, so not as many students taking in class. But we also did have a few students not take it. We started out with 728 students, and only 573 took the course. That's a large DNF that we're you know, continuously working on. But also, this time, the, the online UOL, UOL semester, 
wasn't actually on the bottom. The grades for those those guys actually went up this particular semester. Uh, again, everybody was pretty much everybody was using the Hulk system, except for one experienced faculty member. He didn't want to use the Hulk system. He wanted to do his own thing. He's uh, one of our math education professors, and I'll talk about him in just a second. So by the fall 2016 semester, all faculty, uh, full-time, part-time, and graduate students were required to use the Hawks Resign. However, there was one mathematics education professor requested to try a different system. Right? And one part-time instructor that was added to the teaching faculty uh, during the first week of classes that did not all use the redesign and the Hawk system. And I'm afraid that part was mine. I didn't know we had a new faculty member and I was in charge of pushing out all this material. And it was after the first week of class and uh, nobody let me know. And so they just had what the department gave them, which was the old stuff. And they used the old stuff. And of course we had our uh, other professor uh, from the math ed department. He's trying something new and I'll talk about what he likes to try in the class and stuff. But uh, so let's take a look at the data there. So uh, now you'll notice that as we get people get uh, more involved and used to the uh, Hawk system and uh, getting acclimated to it and the new redesign as a total, uh, the original Hawks team, that's the OTH, we're not in the top anymore. Some of our other faculty are actually taking the lead with this stuff. And I even put in there a department head, an old department head. They were teaching uh, college algebra and trying to get used to the new system and the new redesign as well. And their averages are actually still very good. So uh, this particular semester, every semester we have a different exam. So please understand, so the numbers are going to change based upon that particular semester and how well we do with the uh, exam, the common exam that everybody takes just to see how we're doing. And we're the math department and statistics department. So we have to run numbers on everybody. So you get to see the idea that even the, uh, the uh, department head and the old department head who were actually teaching um, using the Hawks, uh, they, their averages were right up there at the top. And uh, if I keep on going, uh, the numbers that can do spread down. And once again, we put the uh, new graduate student on the online system. And again, the online did not do as well. But the two people that did not use the Hawks was actually more towards the bottom. Now, my experienced faculty member with the math ed department, department, they didn't do that bad. I mean, the average is still very, very good. We're not, we, we didn't complain about that, but it was actually towards the bottom. However, the, uh, the person, the, the new faculty member that uh, I didn't know added to the, was added to the department on that first week of class at section 91 that was just added, their, their class did not do as well on the exam and it was just a point bigger, better than the online course, which has always been typically for us on the bottom. So fall 2017 exams, give me some more data here. So uh, this is embarrassing for the experienced faculty members that a graduate student took the lead on this particular semester. Every semester is different. And we do kind of view this as kind of a um, competition type thing here. Um, but again, my, my friend from the math ed department uh, did very well. He's now in the top four uh, of this particular semester. This was a tougher exam here. So the, uh, the grades weren't as good. So if I show you the grades all the way down here, the overall average was a 68 compared to what it has been up in the 70s before. And this was due to the dynamics of the exam. And once again, the uh, online course, uh, the traditional online course was at the bottom. And I can tell you another reason why it's at the bottom. We have a, such a bad rate of attrition in that particular course. We had started out with 45 students, only 24 of them took the exam. And with that, that actually does, we do kind of do this adjusted mean for the number of people that didn't take the, uh, the exam and stuff. And that really hurt their there are the averages on that particular class as well. But that, that is not unusual on the online course. They start out, but you gotta be a special kind of student to take an online math course. You gotta be Johnny on the spot. If you are anywhere close to a procrastinator, that course will kill you. So our preliminary results and conclusions. Okay, by using the college algebra design embedded with the Hulk system and software, our overall common exam, exam averages for the last four semesters uh, have been uh, consistent. However, the standard deviation of final exam scores have significantly decreased. So every semester, the exam is different. What we're also paying attention to is that standard deviation between sections because we're all doing the same thing, using the same type of notes. Uh, that, that standard deviation across sections has significantly decreased. Due to the uh, more unified teaching approach and greatly due to the ease of use of the Hulk system, 
and software by students and faculty, which make it all possible. The Hulk software program and the online support for both students and faculty is simply the best. And I can't reiterate that fine fact that whenever I had a problem, I was on the phone. I'm not a big emailer or a texter or anything like that. I got a problem. I want to talk to somebody about it pretty quick. And they have their support system and making that phone call. I always had somebody right there and I had problem fixed usually within minutes. On the other point of interest, the university um, uh, is the, uh, you know, for the university is the uh, overall DNF ratings. As they have somewhat gone down under the redesign with Hawks, they're still high. This is attributed to the amount of work required for our uh, redesign in the before class activities and the after class activities. Now that about 90% of the faculty are using the redesign with the Hawks, our DNF rating continued to decrease. Um, again, it was a lot of students would sit there and look at how much work they had to do in a particular class. And they would try to go actually out of their way to find classes that weren't using the Hawks. And it was getting tougher and tougher for them to do that. There was only pretty much one professor now that actually wasn't doing the Hawks. They were actually doing their own system. So, however, for the, those students that, that that do the work and stick it out for the semester, their overall grades have significantly increased, which makes the department and the university very happy with the results. As we analyze our final exam results for the last four years in conjunction with the overall grades, the data is overwhelming supports the success of the Hulk system within our college algebra redesign. We are now working on using the Hulk system with our business calculus and pre-calculus course. We've expanded using the same dynamics and the same concepts within business calculus and we'll start working with the pre-calculus course, okay? Some of, the, some of my student comments, I wanted you guys to kind of see a little bit of this. Now, remember, this was several years ago. Uh, we, we started this thing out in 2015, but uh, that particular semester, these are the kind of comments. And I, I was getting consistent comments on that. And uh, one of them was in particular about uh, there was a lot of work to do in the beginning, but they're glad they stuck it out and they've never had such a good grade in mathematics. So I'll let you read these. And, you know, I started this out, made those videos in 2015. And then, of course, the math department had me doing some other things. So I occasionally get to teach college algebra, but not as often. Uh, I typically teach now the engineering calculus two or modern algebra or some graduate level classes. I do whatever I'm told, you know. Um, but uh, even in 2018, I had a student email me uh, two years after I made the course videos. And this is what they said about it. And I just really appreciated that. So I wanted to put that in there that you know when you do these redesigns and you create these little models that you continuously use each semester students are paying attention and they really do appreciate it non-measurable benefits number one hulk support I mean, that is the number one. And that was honestly one of the biggest reasons. There was two major reasons why we went with Hawks. Their customer support and more customer faculty support. That's really what we were interested in. The uh, commitment to core support agent, the, uh, the faculty training sessions they gave us on, on campus, because every semester we've got this revolving door of instructors teaching this stuff between the graduate students, the part-time faculty, and the new new uh, faculty that can come in through our doors and stuff like that, that 24-7 support line, uh, faculty orientation, the ease of setting up a course and sharing it with the new and, uh, and inexperienced faculty, streamlines the process of orientation with the new and inexperienced faculty in the course, and department policies such as the syllabus, grade distribution that we all utilize the same thing. So, you know, a, a new faculty member comes in that has basically no resources we're providing them with a lot of resources here. It ensures that students receive equally high quality instruction across multiple sections. That was another thing that we were trying to focus on in terms of our redesign. That, that crap shoot depends on which professor you got, how well then you were gonna end up in that particular class. Now that we're all kind of teaching it the same way, I mean, each professor still has their autonomy within the class, but you know, we're all kind of doing the same thing and really focusing on the same type of examples 
which kind of relates to what the kind of problems they're going to see on the final exam, that uh, that really kind of helped us also kind of tone in in terms of those averages all over the place and stuff. And improved course delivery, uh, improved course accessibility, uh, delivery for increased technology and client generation. You know, uh, our students know more about the computers than we do. Uh, modern appealing course appearance and consistent high quality delivery method through the Hawk system. But now that was part one. Now that was several, about five years ago. Five years later, let me show you what's been going on. Well, as we use the Hawk system consistently for college algebra since 2016, our student mean and exam scores have remained consistent with smaller standard deviations between sections. So it's been doing what we wanted to do. Okay, so I'll give you some data here. And you know, COVID's coming down the corner. So this is just before COVID, you know, 2018 fall semester. And again, every semester the exam is different. So we have new faculty member, actually uh, new part-time faculty members. Uh, and then we had a graduate student and the average is 76. And this was a fall semester, so we had you know, uh, enrolled 2,078 students, 1923 actually took the exam. So our DNF rating was much better than it has been. Uh, again, the, the, the numbers around and my, my friend from the math ed department, uh, he's consistently doing uh, his own little thing. We're trying to use different stuff. Now I, I'm gonna pick on him, but God help him. Um, he teaches the large sections, 124 is a class, he had 118. He doesn't like technology at all. This is, this is my friend. Um, he actually hands out, he does homework every day. They have a, a problem that they do and he grades it by hand. He doesn't even use graduate students. So he's got 124. Every other day he's in class, he's having them do problems in class. He has them do traditional homework and turn it in. And he wants to see what they're doing and how they're doing it. And he's trying new and different techniques on trying to get the material across using his, uh, you know, again, his background in math education, stuff like that. But he uses no technology whatsoever. And I don't know how that ends up. It's incredible. All right, so, and then fall 2019. So I'm kind of giving you fall numbers because that's when we have our big section here. And so you kind of see the averages. And again, every semester is different. Every class is going to be, have its own uh, uh, different personality and stuff. And uh, again, uh, sometimes numbers are a little bit larger than we would like and stuff, but uh, still, except for those last few sections at the bottom, again, it was uh, a new part-time faculty member that came in, and uh, again, there's a learning curve here, so uh, uh, you, you get to see those, and, and new part-time faculty and graduate students are kind of more towards the bottom, not as adept, but as they go on, they'll, they'll get better at this stuff. And then came the pandemic, COVID pandemic. So in the early part of March of the spring semester of 2020, we had to convert all class to online and continue the modality through the, uh, the summer and the fall semester of 2020. By the fall semester, instructors were given the tools to work synchronous, synchronously uh, with students uh, online, and a few sections were given the option to have face-to-face -face meetings. So uh, every school probably had their own different dynamics, but right at the beginning, the rest of the spring semester, it was asynchronous online courses. Uh, absolutely hideous. Um, then the summer, <laughs> it wasn't any better. It was all also, for the most part, it was uh, uh, asynchronous. We started to try to put some synchronous aspect. By the fall 2020 semester, we were trying to get synchronous, making the students actually sign in all at the same time and actually kind of work through Zoom or whatever the case may be on these face-to-face -face meetings. I'm sure you guys did somewhat the same thing. So here's our data for the spring 2020. Now this is a spring semester, so we didn't have as many students taking it. So, but you get to see the averages. And, and, and even though the, uh, the, the exam was done online, which makes the data questionable in my, in my book, uh, the adjusted mean uh, was, uh, the high was a 72, the low, which was incredible, the actual online course itself, which was completely asynchronous. So they didn't actually try to meet with the students at all. Uh, they did the worst, but that was uh, you know new part-time faculty. Again, the new dynamics and stuff. I just kind of want to show you the numbers, but honestly, they weren't that bad compared to other classes and how they were doing with the, uh, the pandemic and stuff. Uh, the numbers were for us were all over the place. It really depends on the course you were teaching and stuff. Uh, luckily for us, we had 
the course videos. We've had all that stuff embedded within Hawks. The Hawks system was, was up and running. We had my, the videos in there, the before class videos. We had lecture videos also embedded so they could watch those things. So it was an easier transition for things like, for us, college algebra, Calc 1, Calc 2. The courses that didn't have any videos or anything like that, faculty were just scrambling to make their own videos and stuff. It was, it was tough. So in the fall 2020, this is when we first started to do a little bit of the, try to get the students in doing, uh, you know, synchronous classes and stuff. And the averages went up, but again, it was a larger semester, but you'll also notice that our numbers were actually dropping. We only had 1,500 students that particular semester in the fall semester taking college algebra. Uh, and the uh, online synchronous action course is actually not at the bottom of this particular semester because we're doing it pretty much all the same thing, but we were doing most of these classes had a synchronous aspect to it. And it was really up to the professor, uh, whether it was completely synchronous or part synchronous, part asynchronous, you know, uh, the university was very uh, open to making, allowing us to do whatever we needed to do to get material across. So problems with our redesign. Now, here, here comes our big issue, and uh, I'll let you know, but if you work at a big school, you, you know, and even the small schools are going to have the same problems here. With re all redesigns, it is a continuous development. It must be maintained, tweaked, and modified in order to ensure the system is working efficiently. Okay. There was our problem right there. We did this thing. We had it working good for, you know, two, three years after the fact for 2018 and stuff. But our problem was, well, I'm, the, the redesign team had to go and go redesign other things like calculus one, calculus two. The department wanted us to work on some other things. And no one was completely in charge of maintaining the college algebra canvas page or coordinating the instructors. So we basically had this stuff. If you were teaching college algebra, it was basically pushed out in you but we really didn't have anybody that was in charge. And, and I can tell you why. We actually did have someone that was in charge. They retired and nobody actually filled their shoes. Uh, classic you know, state government mindset here. And so uh, that kind of left a gap in terms of helping this stuff out. Our Canvas page became minimalistic and the Hawks website and the uh, course page had everything embedded. So a lot of faculty, you know, with, with the way Hawks had their solar system set up, they even customized it for us. We had my videos actually embedded in the Hawk system, the pre-section videos embedded in the Hawk system. Even our course notes, those half notes were embedded in the Hawk system. Why have the Canvas page at all? It was just the record keeping of their grades that were being passed back and stuff. So we really didn't have, you know, the university actually, all the new things going on that particular semester and having the, the, the faculty create their own kind of special website. We were relying very heavily on Hawks and having everything even if we were doing something special within the university, everything that was the Hulk system. Hats off to the Hulk folks, but it kind of made our stuff very minimalistic. Our other problems. Another issue to all UNC C lower uh, level mathematics and statistics courses is our placement. Our student placement for freshmen was not consistent. After two years of online education, yeah, thank you, Mr. Pandemic there, in mathematics, our incoming freshmen were not ready for our college, especially mathematics. We had a real problem and we saw it coming. So what was our solution to the problem? During the summer of 2021, our department started the Math Tsunami Project. Now, when you come up with these names, you know it's math people, so don't think too deep in it. For this project, we applied for funding from the UNC system, University of North Carolina system out of Chapel Hill, it's basically NC State and Chapel Hill, uh, kind of heading up the entire UNC systems of schools here in order to support the quote wave of unprepared and incoming undergraduate students. We saw this thing coming after two years of online and seeing what's happening to our students. We can imagine what our high school students are doing here. So with college algebra, we also in the, in, in the, implemented strong coordination with a course coordinator being in charge to manage the Canvas page. This is not just with college algebra. We did this with pre-calculus, uh, business calculus, calculus one and calculus two, especially uh, college algebra, calculus one and calculus two. They're the ones, and, and pre-calculus, have the big course coordinator, what they call tight or strong coordination is uh, what, we, what was uh, enacted on us. So we have somebody who's in charge, who's not just suggesting what you use, 
more or less telling you what you're going to be using for your classes and stuff. So trying to make sure everything for everybody has what they need from for teaching the particular subject matters and stuff. So, um, Mr. Taylor, so, I'm so sorry um, to yeah. interrupt. I just wanted to give you a 10 minute heads up just so oh, that sure. we can allow sure. I'm, time I'm for questions. Here. Take your Thank time. You. All right. So with college algebra, we also made strong coordination with a uh, course coordinator being in charge and managed the course page, being in charge of assignments, working closely with the Hawks team in order to help uh, faculty get the materials and links they need to teach their class. With the Tsunami project, the UNC system gave us uh, access to the Alex placement system in order to compare our placement of, of students. As we expected, our placement of students was very inaccurate. We were using everything from student scores from high school, SAT scores, ACT scores. We had this hot, we had this hodgepodge of way of placing students and it was not very good at all. And with the Tsunami Project funding, the College Algebra faculty were asked to view and try out the whole Alex College Algebra courseware. The faculty overwhelmingly decided to stick with our Hulk system. Uh, we liked there the Alex placement test that we were uh, given access to through the UNC system and the Tsunami Project. But in terms of our courseware and stuff, we know we're on the right track with Hulks and we unanimously stuck with the Hulk system. More solutions to the problems. With college algebra, we're also in, uh, in, in implementing strong coordination with a course coordinator being in charge and managing the Canvas page. Okay, this is to, to us uh, the, the key uh, to this, uh, like I said, to the system is um, having somebody in charge. Like I said, what happened before is the person that was really in charge retired and nobody filled their shoes. So now we're actually uh, finding people to actually put in charge of each one of our courses and stuff. So last bit here, I wanna let you guys know, uh, this was this past semester, it is still under the COVID pandemic. So we had first part of the course, it was online. Then we went back to face-to-face -face courses and we were face to face the rest of the semester and stuff. So here's where our data is now. And um, uh, my friend from the math ed department, his average was pretty good. Um, but what you're gonna see with these numbers is this, that we are getting that tsunami problem with these students are coming in unprepared. And it really does show up in our averages as well. Now, each exam we do at the end of the semester is kind of, you know, it is different, so the numbers are going to change and not going to be consistent, always high or always low. But the numbers, this is a fall semester, so you get to see the numbers here. So we were in, they were all, uh, five to 10 points lower than what we usually expect. But this is part of that tsunami of unprepared students. Also, you'll see down here, we had a new part-time faculty in charge of section 300. That was a special section of nothing but want to be engineering students that did not have the traditional calculus background to come in straight into calculus. They actually placed into college algebra and um, their average was actually one towards the bottom, which is you know actually surprising to us. They just, you know, I was expecting uh, our engineering wannabe students to actually have better math skills. But again, coming out of two years of online education, I'm afraid they didn't. And you also notice our numbers are down too. We only had uh, 1,600 students actually taking uh, college algebra this past semester and stuff, and in that fall semester. So. And as the story continues at UNC Charlotte, I will let you know how our data goes. So uh, pretty much the end of the talk, just to give you an idea. But again, anytime you're doing a redesign, it, you, you get, it, it's not a fire and forget. You gotta work on it and create this thing and then check it out, see if it's working and continuously tweaking on it. And once you, you know, pretty much let it go or not got, put somebody in charge of it and can share stuff, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll actually go by the wayside and you don't have to come back and tweak it a lot more next time. And that's basically what we're doing. So, any questions? Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Oh, my pleasure. Um, very informative. And um, I know we all enjoyed being able to see those numbers behind it all as well. Um, some of them are good and some of them aren't so good. This is real data. And that adjusted mean also adjusts for uh, our DNF rating at some students when they start out the semester, just they, they don't finish the semester. And some, some have legitimate reasons, whether they, you know, finances, life happens, you know, we, we understand that, but 
we really do try hard to try to keep these people motivated with the math learning center, having those extra resources and having, you know, the Hawks and the support we get from Hawks. I mean, I, I'm, I'm behind it on the, 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 the faculty side because I'm always screwing something up on the system. I mean, that's just what I do. But also my students, I think they call you guys just as much as uh, anybody. I mean, don't get me wrong. They do the text. They do the, the online chat. Yeah, I think I've chatted with you one time. What's your phone number so I could call you up and stuff? So I prefer actually talking to somebody. And I think most of the faculty around here are kind of in my boat. Yes, absolutely. Well, we're glad that y'all call. That's what we're here to do to help you guys. Um, I'm going to take a look at the Q&A box. Everyone, if you have any questions at this time, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A box. Um, at this time, we do not yet have any questions, um, but I did have a question. Um, yeah. So you mentioned that along the way um, of this redesign journey, um, Canvas was scaled back. And so there was, um, there was more, more um, information embedded in Hawks. You mentioned embedding your videos. Right. Um, so I was wondering if you would share with everyone a little bit more about um, your videos and where students find those in Hawks. Sure, you guys have customized our page. Uh, I gave you the links. I mean, okay, so I made videos and then we used to house them on campus here and uh, they were very popular. So the university, because of streaming cost or something or other, asked us to turn them into YouTube. You gotta love that. So I created my own little YouTube channel and posted them on YouTube. And we gave Hawks the links to all the YouTube videos and stuff. And you guys actually embedded it to make it easy access for the students. We also had them you know, double dipping here. We had them in our Canvas site as well, but we also gave them you guys, because again, the students were basically all the material they need is in Hawks. So they were doing more time in Hawks than were on actually on our Canvas site. They were actually on our Canvas site and also on Hawks so they can get them either way, the before class videos. And I also had a complete set of lecture videos. So. Uh, after they've done the stuff, if they want to go back over the material that was just uh, presented to them, uh, we have a, set, a complete set of lecture videos that they can go and watch those things as well, which are also embedded in the Hulk. So if you didn't quite understand something your professor said, well, a lot of times your professor recorded, especially thanks to the pandemic, we're trying to be recording everything these days. Um, but um, I had those set of videos already set up and that really helped us out for our you know, freshman, sophomore level classes, when, when the pandemic did hit, we were better prepared. I mean, I don't think anybody's really prepared for something like this, but we were better prepared with these kind of courses that we had resources automatic. Because I, I remember we were, it was strange. I got an email from, you know, the, the department head and the, uh, uh, the dean uh, asking, you know, uh, how fast could you guys switch to a complete online system? I told him, uh, well, you give me enough time, I could probably do about two weeks, a week or two weeks, I can convert everything to online, but it's going to be, a, they gave me 48 hours. <laughs> so I was like, two weeks or two days. Okay, so luckily I had all this stuff doing. So I would continue to work and I had something to present to them that, okay, we can convert everything to online if we need to. But I was, there was a continuous two weeks of me making sure everything was in there. I got what we were covering at the moment. And a week later, and then eventually I put everything else into the system where the entire rest of the semester was going. And then the following semester, we were still online. So we used it quite a while, but now we're actually back to face-to-face -face, and thank God. That's great. We did have just a few more questions come into the Q&A sure. box. Um, so um, the first one was, the video pre-instruction recorded by one instructor and posted online for all courses or each instructor recorded their own? No, nobody wanted to do those videos but me. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I, I'm the one that made the videos. Uh, we had a, a system called the Panopto system which the university bought into, which was easy to record your lectures because I was also teaching online graduate level statistics courses at the time. For nurses, a very interesting crowd there. And um, with that, uh, I thought it would be a great idea to take that system and actually start with our, you know, college algebra and our Calc one and Calc two, because that's the bulk of our students. So I actually made the videos, and when we came up with the redesign, it was the idea was to 
create a, a small temple, just one professor. It was a redesigned team, but everybody had different different jobs on the team, making up the lecture, the, the half notes. That was one job. Uh, I had the job of making the videos. So I made the video. So I, I basically wrote up the uh, questions of well, introducing the material and introduced it to them and made sure those questions were actually in the quote guided notes so that when they were watching the video, they still took notes off the video. So they were actually as a part of the actual guided notes, those half notes that we came up with. But it was just one faculty member doing all the introductory stuff. Now, when it came to their own lecture videos, well, I did mo I did the first set of lecture videos for the material. You know, actually, just all I was doing was recording my actual classroom and when I was calling the material and stuff like that. And luckily, the video camera was in the dock cam. So you never saw me. All you ever see is a voiceover and my pencil, my pen working on a particular problem, and I'm doing a voiceover. And that's the way I, I told the department. I mean, I, I'll be more than happy to do your video, but don't follow me around with the camera. I don't do that. So um, it was in the dock cam and stuff. So all the focus is actually on the mathematics itself. And so, uh, but since the pandemic, I think that uh, a lot of faculty, now we're using the Kaltura system, which is embedded into Canvas, that we use the Kaltura system to actually uh, upload to Canvas videos and stuff. So just about every faculty member is doing it. But in the beginning, uh, I was the one of the few fac faculty members that had access to the Panopto recording system, and I used that as what I did. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are out of time and I see that we've had some wonderful other questions um, come in. Um, one was just a comment, not a question. Um, Christine Anderson says she is a parent of one of your calculus students and she <laughs> said that your videos were very helpful to her daughter. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I do make them for Calc 1, Calc 2. Uh, Linear algebra, modern algebra, yeah, anything I do, I make a video out of it. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Mr. Pandemic. <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry that we didn't get to the other questions. Thank you all for sharing them. Um, at this time, we will have to close this session to get ready for the next. And so I'm going to go ahead and share in the chat um, links to our virtual booth, our bookshelf, and as well um, as the conference website. Um, and the other upcoming sessions as well. Um, but thank you again, Dr. Taylor, for your time and your wonderful um, information that you've shared. Um, and thank you for your time with questions. And thank you all for your time. We're so glad that you're here at the conference with us. And um, feel free to swing by the booth if you have not yet to say hello to the Hawks team. We have some wonderful prizes and giveaways that we are um, participating with, um, such as Disney Plus subscriptions and more. So um, please make sure you check, um, you swing by the booth um, during this, um, the, during this uh, break time. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you soon.